So we, here we see uh, one of these wonderful harpsichords of the uh, second half of the 18th century. It's by Burkert Schudi. And harpsichords were the keyboard instrument of most of the 18th century. Bartolomeo Cristofori is considered to have invented the instrument around 1700. And I must say, these were wonderful instruments. He made harpsichords with a hammer action in it. And that means you can play, push down the key and play loud and soft controlled by this key. But for some reason there wasn't much interest in this, there was not much enthusiasm for this. And there were some followers, like for instance Silbermann, but the harpsichord was, was the great instrument. And then around 1750s, uh, a German harpsichord builder came to England and started making forte pianos. His name was Frederick Neubauer, and he is supposed to have built some forte pianos in London, but none of these still exist, so we don't know what this was. It wasn't very popular, apparently. And then, around 1765, there was Johannes Zumpe, also a German, who came to London at some point. He had worked for Schudi for quite a while, before he started for himself. Firstly, st starting making guitars, and around 1765, he started making tiny little square pianos. And that was a huge success immediately. Here's one of them. This is a piano by Zumpe, and Zumpe invented this instrument. And the beautiful thing is it has tiny little hammers, and every key has its own little hammer, so you can play soft or loud. Everybody wanted them. They were cheap, only 16 Guinness, whatever that might have been compared to a good harpsichord, which was maybe a 50 guineas or something. So they were cheap and everybody wanted them. And Zumpe couldn't cope with the demand of them. So there were a lot of countrymen of his, also coming from Germany to London, and they all settled around uh, in Soho, around Hanover Square, Princess Street, Broad Street. They were all in the same neighborhood around the corner. They all started to make this concept. And it was incredible. They were, they were exported to, to mainland Europe, Italy, Portugal, France, uh, Scandinavia, Poland, everywhere, even to America and Australia. It was fantastic suddenly. This is the beginning of the forte piano. And another thing is that, of course, these instruments are small. They're really made for us to play at home. Ideal instruments for accompanying singers and playing, playing the keyboard and singing were very important accomplishments for young ladies. For the rest of this series of films we will talk about grand pianos because they were for the concerts and these were more for the homes but this type of piano is, is very specifically very interesting for the, for the history of the piano. So that's why we show them here. This one is not in the best condition, so to demonstrate one, we have a similar one built by Frederick Beck. This is what you're going to hear. Here's this beautiful piano by Frederick Beck. It was built in uh, uh, 1780 in London. And this wonderful instrument is found by Gerdan and Yvonne Tietström in Stockholm around 1975, I think. And when it came here, <coughs> it was missing, it had missing parts, which we reconstructed. This is very, very similar to the Zumpe pianos of the same period. So it's what I told you that, that Beck and, and the other Germans made pianos in the style of Zumpe. I think the normal way to play this was in a closed po position. And then you could open this, which makes it much louder. And you had. In this piano, it has the so-called swell mechanism that you, with your knee, you can lift this and then you can play louder. <clears throat> Interestingly enough, this comes, actually, it's the same idea what I told last time with the harpsichord by Schudi, who had this, this Venetian swell system. But now I'll open it so you can see how it works.
I think originally they didn't have these sticks. I mean, they were played in closed condition. So here you see the layout of the instrument. The strings are diagonally placed in the instrument and the action is lying underneath the strings and every hammer, every key has its own little hammer hitting two strings per hammer. And every key at the end lifts its own damper. So here you see the key. This is the jack which pushes up the hammer. So that happens here and in the back of the key there's a little stick pushing up the damper. So as long as you push a key down, the damper is being lifted and if you loosen it, the damper comes on the string. But that's actually the whole system of the piano. But the instrument itself is very delicately made. So the strings are so close to each other, if, if a hammer is slightly out of line, then it immediately hits the neighbor's string. So it's very difficult to, to control and, and, and regulate this, this kind of action. In this period, pianos don't have pedals to lift to operate the dampers. So you can't, while you're playing, lift up the dampers like a modern piano. That's a little bit later in time, but in this period, it's almost still like a harpsichord, it has re register stops. So there are three in it here in the case. And the left one is, if I pull it over, then you lift either all the treble dampers or it's, it's divided into all the bass dampers. So this... So you can't, you can't change pedals while you're playing. And in the same way you can lift the treble dampers. And then this piano has a lute stop. And that's a stripe of leather being pushed from underneath against the strings. And it shortens the tone very much. So it has all these sound changes you can make. It's very interesting. So also this piano has got pedal, a pedal mechanism built in later, rather crudely, and uh, the pedals itself themselves were, were missing and we took them out, the remains of them out, and uh, we reconstructed these uh, hand stops. And it was not so difficult because the, the holes where they hinged, used to hinge, were still there. So you could, the balance of the, of the, of the levers were very clear where they were and the rest is copied from the Zumpe piano. Well, playing with no pedals is a problem for us today, but not if you play the exact music, the specific music of this period. Johann Christian Bach was in London in this period and he was a great fan of these pianos and he composed for it and he played his first public concert in 1768 on it. So I wanted to tell you about these, early, the, uh, these earliest square pianos because I think they're the important key between the harpsichord and the forte piano. And you could make a lot of films uh, about the history of the square piano, but I think we will stick to the grand piano and the development of those because they, those were the instruments for the concerts and the square pianos were more um, instruments for making music in the homes. One very nice thing about specifically this piano I want to show you, and that's this tool. It was, for some reason, it came underneath the soundboard of this piano. You couldn't get it out anymore, but it was found when the soundboard came out. This is a beautiful, fantastic tool from 1780. It's a kind of a multi-tool of the time. It's so beautifully made. It's made, it's specially to make loops on the string. You could put this, the, the rest pin in here to make the string on it. It's incredible. And interestingly enough, I found in this, by the way, very nice book by Michael Cole. I learned a lot from it. He quotes a letter of somebody saying, I bought you, I ordered you a Zumpe piano with a hammer and a tool to twist your wire with. This is it. A wonderful book, by the way. And he has another book, which is 
specifically about square pianos, Brotted square pianos, so go after these books, I would say. A hammer, he mentions a hammer also. So in the old times, if you had to take, if, if a string was broken, you had to pull out the pin in order to bind the string on it again, and then you had to, this is for tuning, of course, but to hammer the, the pin back in, Isn't it wonderful what they could make? It's a little hammer. So I ordered you a hammer and a tool to twist your wire with. Here it is. Unbelievable. So in the 1780s, pian pianos got immensely popular and the increasing numbers of production of square pianos and grand pianos, it was enormous. And it was also in the second half of the 18th century that the Enlightenment motivated people to analyze and, and look at their feelings and of other people. And the piano is an ideal instrument to express your feelings. The next time I will tell you about a grand piano by Broadwood 1792. Thank you.